Hey guys, today what I'm going to be doing is showing you a couple of simple tips for working with planes. I'm certain that you're already very familiar with planes, but in case you're not, a plane is a flat 2D polygon onto which a material is usually applied. Let me give you an example here. Here's my content window. Don't dock. And we've got a number of planes. We have a one-sided square, uh, a round ground plane. We don't need to even think about that. Square, square ground plane in a square high res. Uh, now, I'll just quickly give you, give you an overview of the difference. The ground plane and the square high res comprise far more polygons and are a lot larger when we import them. So I'm going to move this off to the side and I'm just going to load a standard square. So here's my square that I just loaded. I'll just move it where you can see it a bit more easily. And change to hidden line. So you can see this is a single polygon, single four, four vertices polygon for that square. Now if I go back and bring in a square high res, What we should find, and that's some um, interestingly, that's laid it flat on the floor, which is where they think you're most likely to want to use it. Um, I, I thought there may be some morphs already applied, but there's not. All oh, right, okay. So they call this cloth plane, and they call this square. So I, I think that this square high res is set up for you to do cloth simulations, maybe a, a blanket or a tablecloth or something like that. And if we look that. Look at that in hidden line. Look at how many polygons that's made up of. When you do cloth simulations, you need a lot of polygons so that it can kind of morph the cloth or bend it. Okay, so, um, and square ground plane is going to be uh, a very large square. Let me load one of those into the scene. Square ground plane. See, that's huge and also lots of polygons again. I'm just going to remove that. And the last one's a bit less obvious, and it's a one-sided square. Uh, we'll talk about that in a while, if I remember. I've already made this video once, and I didn't remember. But okay, so here's a common situation. Supposing I want this square to have applied to it a texture, which is going to be a background scene to look out of this window. So here's my textures window. This is the default view, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to View here. And then I'm on a 4K screen. I'm going to click extra large icons. And now it shows me nice large pictures. And this, I know that the image I want is this one called the Mansion Q, which I assume is in Q Gardens. But look at this lovely aspect ratio. Look at this. It's, it's many times wider than it is tall. Now, knowing that the aspect ratio is wide versus tall, uh, I guess you'd call that um, panoramic. That's great, but we need to know exactly what the dimensions are in pixels. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to view. I'm in Windows 10 here, and we're going to go to the details view. And by default, the details show name, date, type, size, and tags fields. And you can sort by any of those fields. But what we want to do is right click in this space and add another one. And what we want to do is click more. And then slide down. Anybody who works with images, whether it's in Photoshop or whether it's in Poser, should probably have this turned on in their image uh, folders. And we're going to click Dimensions. And now you'll see the dimensions of every single image here are shown in pixels. So if you slide down now to the Mansion Q, you can see that that is... 3600 wide by 800 tall so what's that 800 1600 over four times as wide as it is tall so the image we need is 3600 by 800 so now we're going to go back to poser here's our initial image and we're going to change the scale to match that so 3600 by 800 you could do any multiple of that a full multiple say 36,000 by 8,000 or uh, a smaller fraction 360 by 80 whatever you know just as long as it keeps the aspect ratio but now here's the great thing about it 
you've created these two ratios but now you use the scale dial to scale this for your scene so if I scale this up or down it maintains that same aspect ratio and why does that matter let me show you I go to materials and I'm going to create a 2d texture material image map I'm going to hook that up to my diffuse color and now I'm going to load an image by clicking image source and this goes to my textures folder and I want the mansion Q K E W Q and you'll see that's applied that straight away to there now one more little trick for you here also attach that to the ambient and I'll explain why in a second and now we set the ambient level to white the ambient color to white the ambient value to one ah oh, actually one more tiny thing specular specular is the reflection of the surface so if this was meant to be plastic you'd want a little bit of shininess but because this is actually meant to be a landscape the last thing you want is specular so we're going to turn that off entirely and now let's return to our scene so here we have the background image at the moment it's too close let's just move that back a little bit okay so now we're seeing it out of the window and you see because I've added the ambient ambient uh, another name for ambient is self-illumination so this image is not just a color but it's also radiating light you could literally light the scene with that image you'd have to make it a lot brighter and there would be other um, uh, other issues concerned uh, connected to doing that sorry I'm having trouble with my words but by having the ambient switched on that image looks a lot nicer now see I can see that out of that window supposing my camera's facing this way I might even be able to move that enough so that it also fills that window as well that's the great thing about uh panoramic images okay but for now let's just return to this view here and i'll just do maybe i'll move that back a bit so we see a little bit more of it a bit more of the grass move that up there's no point having stuff out of the view here there you go so that fills that beautifully that looks like a lovely view out of the window and now when i render that scene You'll see that that looks moderately realistic out of the window one more thing actually that I should do we need to be careful when we have uh, infinite lights in our scene rather than these are all spotlights and planes let me just click back into there see that's called square one I would probably go up to properties here and rename that to background image or something similar or maybe Q Q gardens there you go just so now when I'm looking through my props it's easy to see what that's called there you go okay I don't know why there's a square three there I'm getting rid of that okay so I just need to make sure that my Q image is not casting shadows so I make sure it's selected in props then I go to properties over here and I turn shadows off the reason for that is if I have a light behind it I'm pointing again I must get out of that habit but if I have uh, a distant light behind that this will cast shadows into the room which I don't want one more thing let me just show you what happens if I disconnect this ambient or I'll just turn it down to zero for now you saw there that that automatically kind of went a bit duller and there might be times when you do that maybe a nighttime image but I would always have a little bit of ambient and now let me render that and you can see how much less life there is in that the reason you do that is because the scene the scene has been photographed but it's responding to the lighting 
that you've applied to the scene and the lighting that you've applied to the scene is almost certainly not the same as the lighting in the background image it's almost certainly a lower number of kelvin kelvin is the uh, scale for measuring daylight brightness so by by uh turning by putting on some some ambience that brings that life back into the image you see the difference there okay now let's just show you another situation so now i'm going to load a, another square oh actually I, I said that i'd show you why you shouldn't use a one-sided square but just to prove that i'm just going to bring one into the scene i've just double clicked and loaded a one-sided square down here and this time what i want to do is make a poster for the wall this is really common and um i'm just going to find i know i've got a rocket league game poster up here rocket league there you go and the aspect ratio here is 446 by 628 so with the same principle i go into parameters i do x scale 446 y scale 628 so it's a portrait ratio they call this if it was the other way around it would be uh, landscape ratio then i'm going to apply that poster i'm creating i'm in the material room here i'm creating a 2d texture image map hook that up to diffuse now i'm just going to load rocket league Now this time because it's a poster it might be appropriate to have a little bit of specular certainly not one that would be too shiny but maybe um, 0.25 uh, you know posters tend to be slightly glossy finished so we'll put a 0.25 specular on that now this poster is obviously way too big for the room if I move that back kind of against the wall I'm going to put it over here above the couch uh, it's more of a thing that you put in a teen boys room or a uh, hackers kind of room or something like that so I'm going to move that over and put that onto the wall but so that works fine that's a one-sided square but look if I rotate that although it was casting a shadow there it's actually invisible so it will actually render normally if it's the wrong way around or that would be upside down obviously but it's just a lot easier if you just stick with uh, a standard square rather than a one-sided square now when I render that scene I could have saved a lot of time just by doing an area render there I'm sure that most of you already uh, know that area renders are a way for just rendering a small small part of the scene. However, there is a one shortfall. You see there, after it finished rendering, it then applied post FX and enhanced the image quality. Whereas if I do an area render here, this is the area render button up here, and just drag a marquee around the Rocket League poster, it render that much quicker, but it doesn't apply post effects to it so area renders great for a quick preview but because um bondware have been lazy and have not sorted out the uh intel fx thing here in the settings intel denoise they can't apply intel denoise to an, an area render it seems fairly basic to me but they haven't got around to doing it so you can only use area render for previews you can't use area render for final renders okay i think that covers everything guys hopefully i didn't um and ah too much and hopefully you got something useful out of that uh, there are a lot of other situations where you might use that i'll talk about some in another video when we move on to backgrounds and transparent trees and stuff you take care and have a great day